will join one by one. So I will start because uh, already delayed. I said 10, right? Yeah, it's a PPT. Guys, uh, just before, when I am trying to open this application, so sorry, when I am trying to open this PPT, okay, so when I am trying to open this PPT, it is open with the WPS office. Okay, it is trying to open with the WPS office. When I try to open it, it is open with the WPS office. Okay, so I don't want like that. So when I just look at here, I double click. Now it is open with the WPS office. Okay, so why I am using this WPS office? Because you know when I when we have this laptop that time. Uh, it comes with uh, Office uh, 365 or uh, 2013 and it is a trial version only. So guys, when you purchase a laptop or a uh, laptop, usually laptops we are purchasing, right? Not the very less desktops, okay? When you buying a laptop, so buy a, when you look at uh, there is a office is there or not and confirms with the, that office is permanent license or temporary license like a uh, is it showing a 2019 personal or a 2019 uh, or a 2022 or the name whatever it is okay uh, 2019 office for example is a full license means a permanent license or a only trial version like a one week or two weeks or one month trial version three months trial version or a full license compulsory look at okay if it is a trial version don't go with it Better to check with a no office inside. Why? Because of if no office is there, office is not there, it will reduce the cost. Like at least 1,000, 2,000 rupees cost will be difference is there. So definitely verify that one. Okay. Why you should buy a trial version and for activation you have to pay another uh, uh, amount. Like amount is not a simple right. Thousand, not 2,000 rupees. It is 10,000 rupees around 8,000 or 9,000 something is there okay see so it is open in a wps office but currently uh, i use this wps office that time i don't have ms office but currently my my organization given a office uh, id that is office 365 okay so if you see it has my office account okay so on this that guy Okay, so when I given that one automatically I got licensed. Again, okay, I didn't purchase this MS office, uh, office 365 directly. My organization purchased it. So with my account, with uh, my office account means my organization email ID. So I can able to log into office 365 so I can use it. But what happened by default when I open this application, it is opening with the WPS only. Okay, sometimes it will happen. What to do? I want to open with the MS Office like this. Right click. Open with the open with PowerPoint, PowerPoint. like that. You can able to select it. Okay, but problem is for every time I have to do it. Let like what is our hobby? Double click. But every time you are a right click and do it, difficult, right? So, what is the permanent solution? So, we'll see. Right click, go to the properties. You can go to change. Then select like this. Select your other options. Click OK. Okay, sometimes there is a check mark also it will shows in the bottom like a uh, change uh, open these kind of files associated files always like that option is also there. Sometimes it will shows like now. Apply OK. Change PowerPoint. Apply OK. Now you can you see see this is a symbol is changed. If I open this one.
Mm -hmm, it is taking time. Yes. See. It is equal to C. So when you see the PPT, I have forward these two PPTs, of course, uh, window at the window stand time. Uh -huh, OK. So it is look like a very big PPT and reality it is not because of a lot of things we don't discuss. So that's the thing. So which we don't discuss, no need to worry about it. This is very good PPT. Earlier days, so when we are in offline classes, uh, usually we explain all this kind of stuff. Okay, few I will skip by from here. Okay. So like here you can get what is a Windows 10 features of Windows 10 features of Windows 10. Okay, uh, features difference between 8.1 to Windows 10. Windows 10 anniversary editions. It's a very old PPT from Microsoft. These are the editions, different editions. Okay, minimum requirement. Uh, hardware specification for the features. This is not required. Installation time. Windows to go. Update, upgrade kind of paths. Migration, upgradations. Update, upgrade, sorry, upgrade means lower version to higher version. Migrate means moving from one system to another system. Migration means one system to another system or replace the OS in the same system. Okay, this is a path upgradation, migration, ESMT, user state migration. These are the activation already. I told this activation kind of stuff. Retail OEM and Microsoft volume licensing. OK. So this is the change of default. Okay. Yes. Of course, for uh, opening one by one like a server and client. So this is my server. I'm powering on my server VMNet one. Completely private. Let it on. It will take time anyway. Guys here I want to tell first is a groups. Okay, this PPT tell about how to create a users. Okay, how to manage the profile kind of stuff. So here it is. Groups. Windows Server. We are starting. In the server, <coughs> we have a group kind. What is this group? What is this uh, group kind of stuff? It means, for example, I want to give a permission to a user one. OK, and user two. Same permission for a user three. Same access for a user four. OK, like a user five like this. I have a multiple users. I want to give a permission uh, or a access permission or a, I want to create some rule on it. OK, so what I will do, I'll put all the users in the group. For example, group one. For example, group one. Okay, so if I give permission, uh, for example, on file or a printer or a, some data to group one, so then automatically all users will get a permission. All users will get a permission. So like this multiple users multiple users you can put in a groups okay 
So, uh, you think, uh, you, I done a mistake? No, no, I wanted to done this one. See, user 4, 5, user 4 and 5, <coughs> list is here also. Why? Because user 4, user 5 in a group 1, user 4, user 5 also in a group 2. It means a user can be in a multiple groups. A user can be in a multiple groups. Okay. So it is does not require like a one user, one group formula is not there. A user can be in a multiple groups. Next. And these groups, group one and group two is, for example, I added to a group one, two. Just for an example, it is a group one and group two is belongs to group 12. So then automatically user two, user three, user four, five, six, seven, eight, is belongs to group two automatically because the group members here. Okay, yeah, uh, we cannot. Um, if I put it in a uh, uh, there, uh, what is that? We can earlier we can able to write on a screen live screen. That option is removed. Okay, look at here. Yes, this group. Users belongs to <coughs> group one. These users are belongs to group two. Means here it is group four, group five. Sorry, user four, user five are belongs to both group one and group two also. For example, if I add these two groups to a, another group, it means a group can be added to another group. A group can be added to another group. So then a group can be added to another group. For example, if I give a, some access permission, if I give up access permission to this particular group, automatically these two groups will get it. Through this one, these users will get the permission. Understand guys? Group concept? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it, sir. So here it is again. There is a terminology to understand very simple way. First one is user one is member of group one. There is a term member of. So is inside. Or you can say like a group two is. member of group one two okay member of okay so one side in another side reverse side uh, like uh, like this group two okay group one members group one members are user one two five two, uh, well, yeah one two five that is okay <laughs> if you get it user one to user five okay like this members or a uh, group one to members or group one and uh, group two okay members that's a uh, it's very small terminologies. Okay. Next. Yesterday we added a OU. Yesterday we added a OU. Okay. And we added a user and we log into domain controller. So that is also a done. Guys, the last practical uh, what we done. Uh, I posted, but uh, I don't know how many are really no uh, access part, but uh, I tried this thing. So tell me so like just uh, yesterday only. Okay, so time um, slice side maintain. Okay, so how to add a client to domain. This slide. Just 
the client side. Okay. <laughs> How to create a OU, how to add a OU, how to add a user in a Java OU. Okay, like this. Okay. I tried this one, just uh, check it. Okay, so we'll add a users, but when you are add, sorry, we are adding a group, but here it is. Again, look at so group types. A group types distribution group and a security group is there distribution group and security group is there now i am copy paste instead of typing what is a distribution group used only with the email applications not security enabled no sid cannot give permission it means your group is distribution group, so you can't give a permission to that particular group. Means you have given a security permissions like that, so we can't give. Right? So security group, security principal with SID can be given permissions, can also be email enabled. Security groups and distribution groups can be converted into the other type of groups. Okay, uh, that is uh, like you can change from security to distribution group. So that is a uh, second part, but distribution group, security group. Okay, these are the main type of groups. There is a group scope is there. Remember. For example, guys, security group. So I'm going to create a group called a, you know, distribution group. I'm going to create um, uh, B15, B13. I, I am I, so yeah, Q is better. Or else I'll use like this only. Okay, so DG1. So I will tell why I put a, a B15 kind of stuff. DG1. Okay, this is my distribution group. Next, I'm going to create a security group. So starting is must be similar. Easy to search. Lot of groups are there, so you can't search single name here. This is for easy to search purpose. That one. So usually I use a Z or a Q or a, some unique thing. B also sometimes I will use it. OK, so here it is. This is the group and this is the group. For example, I have a file or a, some printer is there. I want to give permissions. OK, security permissions. I want to give like a, a yellow, deny, read, write permissions. I can give to this group, but I can't give to this group because of this group does not have a, an SID. That's it. OK, this groups distribution groups only for group mailing purpose only group mailing purpose only. okay next one is group scope next one is group scope so in a group scope domain local group of course local groups are there local group means uh, the machine local groups domain local groups uh, global groups universal group so three type of main groups are there so when you go to the text it is also showing a local group but in a domain wide we don't have a local group kind of concept local group means uh, okay it is not belongs to domain local machine means server or a anything computer okay Lo it's local machines group account it is a local group these are a domain groups only domain groups only 
so group scopes only so when it is say it is a group type only okay like a scope okay so domain local group very important group to access domain local resources should be member of the group okay yeah it is uh, uh, something i have written i know you don't get it so look at here look at here guys so this is my entire forest okay so this is my forest in a forest we have a domains right forest level domain tree domains child domains like that right this is my domain this is another domain forest is a security boundary within the forest domains trust each other within the forest domains trust each other this is my domain one at dot com for example okay domain two dot com for example okay domain one dot com domain two dot com so this is the my forest okay in the forest domains will trust each other trust each other within the forest domains are trust each other forest is a security boundary security boundary so you have a permission up to this length only one second Okay, so here it is. For example, every domain having their don don domain controller. So if you have a domain controller, it means you have a user, right? So you have a user in this one. For example, user two, like a user one, user two. This user one can able to log into my domain resources, right? So like a in a domain computer. can able to access the printer like that so you can able to access this domain one resources by default user 2 is a member of domain 2 user 2 is a member of domain 2 okay any resources in this domain can able to access he can log into the uh, computers he can log he can access the printers storages like that by default he got a permission because of is a belongs to domain 2 so user 2 can able to access local resources of domain 2 this user 1 is belongs to domain 1 so obviously can able to access domain 1 local resources means domain 1 computers printers like the storages we can able to access now for example guys think different companies are there for example our company savantis savantis also dealing with a lot of other uh, clients for example okay so uh, here is a person so user 1 has to go to domain 2 okay user 1 has to go and work on the domain 2 computer okay so user 1 is belongs to domain 1 has to go to domain 2 in generally so we send up people to work on a different organizations or a 
in the same forest. For example, TCS guy is there. There is a problem in the uh, uh, Tata Motors uh, in, a, in their company. There is a software issue is there. The TCS guy went and uh, tried to solve the problem. But he need a access permission. He need a access permission, right? So both are in the same forest. So both can be trust each other. But problem is <coughs> local access permissions are required. So how to get it? So here in this one, we create a group. Is a domain local group. Make the user is a member of domain local group here. And so then through this domain local group, user can able to access. OK, so. Understand guys, I created a domain local group in the domain two. So then. I add this user one to domain local group. So then user one can able to access local resources like he can able to log into my computer. He can able to access uh, uh, like that. OK. This is a domain loop. Next one is global group. Global group. Users it means you are belongs to a, a domain and you want to access other domains. You want to go outside of your domain. Then you must be a member of. Global group. You must be a member of a global group. You must be a member of. So user one. Is belongs to domain one. Is a member of a globe global group and the global group is a member of domain local group in the domain uh, domain two. OK, so then user one can able to go outside of my domain and can able to access domain to local resources. OK. Understand guys are uh, totally confused. Sir, one more time, sir, sir not not get it. Can we repeat one? OK, OK. Do you understand domain local group? OK. Um, uh, OK, uh, first of all, I have uh, two domains in the same forest. TCS. One is. TCS. Another one is Tata Motors. A Tata Telecom, whatever it is. Tata Telecom is gone. So Tata Motors. OK. Now both are in the same forest. TCS user uh, has to log into Tata.com's their computers. Okay, their computers they want to log in. Why? Because there is a, some work is there, so he has to log in. To log in, this user, this user account must be member of this domain local group this is a group okay in this group you should be a member then only you can able to access got this point got it yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. area wise also you can understand simple there is a some area so you came into that area and if you are a member of that area then only you can able to participate in elections or maybe you can able to uh, access right. I, I should be a resident of that area. Then only I can able to access. Otherwise. I have to join in a, some local group then able to access. First point is that one you should user must be a member of a do, users in the domain local group can able to access the local resources. But which resources that is also depends. OK, for example, only storage. This group has a permission to access a particular storage. Or maybe this group has a permission to access 
only a printer or maybe a computer. So like this, which permissions you are given for this group? Based on that only you can able to access. You can't access everything because of you are a member of domain local group. OK, so we given a permission to a group. And that permissions only you will get it if you are a member of that. Group. That is first. Next. You are going outside. Means you are belongs to. TCS group. Sorry, TCS domain and you want to go outside of your domain. So then you are a member of. Global group should be a member of global group then only yeah, you can able to access like some other, other domains they will be accessing or something which would uh, uh, tell me again like you are saying outside the domain like if it is tcs you're telling cognizant this person will be will be going and working there then he has to be a member of gg is it correct yeah right but uh, tcs and cognizant are both are different forest so that's the reason he has to be in the global group because he has to work in some other environment. Right, right. Uh, but point is here, it should be in a same forest. Correct, you got un understand, but I'm mm. little changing. Mm. Make sure both are in a same forest. Same then what is the difference sir, with uh, domain local group and global group? Because here also both the domains are in the same forest, right? And yes. yet he is accessing. Domain local group is your se same separate company. separate domain. Here different company or uh, something like that. Is it correct? Yeah. Uh, Tata, ex I, uh, I am, uh, what I'm telling is Tata is a forest. OK, um, TCS one tree. OK, uh, another tree is a Tata Motors. For example, you are a TCS employee. So it, TCS belongs to Tata. Tata yes, Motors sir. is also belongs to. Tata company only. Yes, sir. Both are belongs to under same forest. But yes. you are a TCS employee go to Tata Motors and uh, so guy I am a manager in the TCS. So you call uh, one guy from the Tata Motors do like this, do like this. What he will tell? Who are you? You are not a manager for me. Maybe you are a manager in the TCS, but you are not a manager for me. Okay. Both are in the same umbrella, but you cannot command me, right? Okay. Now you got it? No, sir, I'm still confused. <laughs> okay, so no sorry. Problem. No problem, no problem, no. So OK. It, it is a general common OK because it's a do these terminologies are like that only. So that's not your problem. OK, so it is a very simple. Uh, one more point is there I will tell and uh, later it is not a very uh, pressing point also not there. OK. So if you have a different forest. So then we'll go to different forest. So for example, user to want to access other forest related domains. OK, by default, by default, one forest won't trust other forest domains. OK, by default, there is no trust relationship between. There is no trust relationship between. One forest to another forest no trust relationship by default by default so you have to create a trust relationship between one forest to another forest then only a user can able to log in again so you are a tcs guy and there is a problem in the company like a uh, cts okay in the cts there is a some issue or some work is there it's a collaboration of two companies Okay, there is a project based on a collaboration. Two two companies, separate separate companies, separate organization. Collaboration is there. Okay, uh, uh, like a Vodafone idea. A Vodafone idea. See, Vodafone is a different company. Idea is a different company, but commonly they want to merge together and do work. Okay, 
So like uh, they put a vi.com kind of stuff. Okay, vodafone.com, idea.com become a vi.com. Okay, that is merging. I'm not talking about a merging kind of stuff. I'm talking in a uh, some collaborated project is there. Okay, two companies or three companies together they should work on a some um, project. Okay, in that cases we are to trust each other. So Tata company must be trust CTS company. Then user, for example, user to should uh, uh, log in. Okay, sometimes he has to go to TCS uh, Butler uh, um, company is a certain part like a, you know uh, CTS uh, domain dot com. Okay, so what is you put it? Yeah, CTS dot com. So why you are worrying? Okay. And uh, there is a, a system printers are there. So you want to access the resources. From domain to to you want to access this particular domain local resources. So user must be a member of universal group. User must be a member of universal group. And uh, here. You are a must be a member of. A domain local group. A domain local group. Then only we can able to access. So this is both are in a same forest. Here it is. Different forest. But to access the local resources, any user must be a member of domain local group only. Okay. And to jump out of your thing, uh, it means you want to access the different law domain local resources. You should be a member of global group in your. I think uh, you may get confused here. Um, so I need a different colors here. Yeah, this is good. So this is GG's belongs to domain one. OK, GG's belongs to domain one. DL is a belongs to domain two. OK, UZ is belongs to domain two. This DL is belongs to CTS.com. OK, so domain local group is belongs to my domain only current domain. OK, so global group belongs to that domain other domain where the user is located. That's the nearest location written. OK, uh, don't uh, don't worry about it. So there is some explanation is also there so you can try this explanation if you can able to understand OK, if you cannot. Also, no problem. That's not a big deal. But you must understand a very basic thing is what is a group. OK, and uh, if you can able to understand. Uh, what is a distribution group and security group? Also, we can see. OK, so that is uh, the sentence is also very difficult to get it. Uh, one more point is there. That's why what I'm trying to show you here. So this is the uh, ID IG DLA. Just. This is a global group. This is another global group. Sales is a, a one global group. OK, you can see sales is a one group. Auditors another group. These are a, both are a global groups is a member of domain local group is a member of a domain local group. The domain global group given a permission to access some data. OK, so this is how to read this and entire this thing is one single sentence only. This entire thing is single sentence only. I identities users are a computers. It means users and computers are a member of Global group means the member of global group. Which collects members based on a member roles based on the member roles 
which a member of domain local group, which member of domain local group means these global groups are belongs to members of domain local group, which provide a management such as a resource access, which are assigned access to resources. OK, so global groups are a member of domain local group, which provide a management such as a resource access, which are assigned access resources. Meaning is I given a permission to this domain local group to access certain resources like some data, some printer, some computer like that. OK. So this is the hierarchy. Of course, there is a UG part is also there means universal group is also there. Either uh, like this or that one it is will be there. So entire thing is one single. Uh, so we'll go back uh, once and uh, we'll see the groups. That's it. OK. Uh, Active Directory users and computers. Active Directory users and computers. We created a two users in the IT support. One is Jai, another one is Swapnil. OK. Now I'm going to create a user a group. OK, right click. Because in the white space only I'm right clicking it. Here only I want to create new. Group. Yes, when you observe. If you observe this thing, when I create a user or a group or a. Uh, OU, it is showing new object. New object. So group name is yeah, B15 BSG1. OK, distribution group. Group scope can be anything, no problem, distribution group. Again, I'm creating another group. B15. Um, Security one. Yes, you one. I think I done a mistake here. DZ one distribution group, right? So DZ one. Like this. OK, this is a distribution group. This is security group group types. Also it is showing. It is showing it is a global, but you cannot convert global into uh, local. OK, so I will convert it by like this. Okay. OK, don't know all of us a global group or a thing. Just uh, know how to create a group. And group name I changed it. Members, member of managed by. Members, member of managed by. Delete. New group. Distribution group. B15. BG1. Don't get confused in that one. OK, DG1, SG1, distribution group, security group. Two groups are there. Next, I want to add a user to this particular group. OK, so how to add it? So I'm going to user first of all. I'm going to use it. Member of. Member of this user is a member of. User is a member of. By default domain users. That is another group is a member of another group is there. Just click and. 
search for a group. See, I want to add it to SG1. Add it. Okay. Simple. So user is a member of B15 SG1 group. Member of. Okay. Next. I'm going to SG1. In the SG1, I click on a members. See, the, uh, your username is showing here, members. And it's not a member of anything, but I have a member also. I have a member. Okay, now I want to add Swapnil to this SG1. Swapnil to SG1. So click Swapnil and uh, check names. Okay, this is the name it is appear. Click OK lines. See. I have a members, two members now. Okay, it means in this group, two users are there. So I'm going to Swapnil members. So look at here. I belongs to this particular group. So this way also you can able to join in a group. Either user, open the user, go to member of, add, add to group, search for a group and add to a group. Or go to a group, click on a members, add, search for a user, add the user here. Okay, in two ways you can do it. In third way is also there, I will show you. I want to add a Swapnil to DG1. I want to add a Swapnil to DG1. So Swapnil, you add to a group. You add to a group. And it is asking, what is your group name? Yes, successfully. So go to the group, check the members. Swapnil is here. Okay. So this is how to add a user to a group. And uh, this is my user, right? I added to two you groups, see like this. That's it. Now I have a two groups are there. So this is one part is completed. How to add a user to a group, right? For example, I want to give some permissions to these, these groups. Okay. Properties, security, edit, add, giving permission to these groups. So look at here. I am going to properties, security. Edit, add. So I'm typing B15 because both are having a common name. Starting name is B15. Check names. I'm getting only SG1. Where is DG1? So if you got a doubt, I will show you again. Uh, I'm going to create another group. B15 DG2 this distribution group B15 security group okay so I have a five groups are four groups are there okay now again same file properties security edit add b15 so look at this it is showing sg1 sg2 not dg1 and dg2 why
I think you will give the security to that uh, folder, sir. So, DZ1 is a distribution group, right? So, DZ1, what is yes, a DZ1? Distribution group. So, distribution group don't have SIDs. You can't give permissions to, permissions to access. DZ1. Okay? Understand, guys? Difference between security group and a distribution group. Very good. So what is this domain local group and global group? Uh, practically, we can't show you that one, but we can create it different uh, groups kind of stuff. Uh, no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create. A global group. So B15. GG1. Global group security global group I'm creating. I'm creating another group. Uh, B15 UZ one universal group I'm creating. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm trying to add this GG1 to SG1. This is a GG1 global group. I want to add it to uh, uh, some SG1. Add to B15. What it is showing? Why it is showing like that? Yeah, members, not members, member of. Member of. I'm adding GG1 means global group to domain local group. I want to add a global group to domain local group. Okay, so in this list, it is showing DG1, DG2, GG1, SG1, SG2, UZ2, UZ1. SG1, I am selecting. So I, I, I add it to okay, domain local group. Okay, and this is the uh, domain local group, right? So this is the domain local group. I want to add a domain local group to global group or a universal group. So where is a global group here? Not there. Not there. Okay, these are all local groups only. No domain, uh, no global group, no universal group. No local group, no universal group. Okay. UZ, member of. So it is showing uh, local groups and universal group, but not a global group. Okay. So it is a very simplest thing. So look at here. So one more point I want to say here it is. Uh, we don't have a space. So I will try. Domain local group. Can <coughs> can add it to domain local group only. Global group. Can add it to domain local group. And uh, global group only. Universal group can add it to domain, local group, and universal group only. Okay. One universal group can be added to another universal group. A universal group can able to add it to domain, local group. Global group can able to add it to domain, local, but domain, local group cannot add it to global group. So this is the strategy. Earlier days we have a very big pictures are there, so we I showed that one. Now I'm not doing this. Guys, this is about your groups. Distribution group, security group. Understand, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what you will do? 
Mustafa Allah 